Okay. Welcome to vocabulary for sophomore year. And say hi to Victor. This is Victor, and Victor's a Viking. Vikings like to conquer, and they conquered many people. Victor the Viking liked to conquer. Hmm. Shada, what do you think our first Latin or Greek root is? Good guess. You're actually just about answering my second question, so I'm going to ask you that second question in just a moment. Cassidy. I'm sorry, say it louder. Think or Vict. Your root, first one in unit one, is Vink or Vict. Now, Shada, what does it mean? Shada, let me tell you a little bit about what I'm doing up here. I'm including a picture and some text, hopefully to give you a little memory device to help you remember the root, which means that I've probably repeated the definition several times in there, because repetition helps us memorize. What do you think the definition is? Take a look at There you go. See, Shada, you're fine. It comes from the Latin, and it means to conquer. Vink or vict means to conquer. And the vink may not be the hard C sound. It may be the soft C sound, Vince. Considering that, Vince or vict, what words use it? Invincible, very nice. So, what does invincible mean? Well, take it apart, right? Hold, hold on a second, take it apart. You have Vince, which you know means to conquer. You have able, which is just a suffix for an adjective. And you have in. What does the in prefix do? Not able to be conquered. Something that is not able to be conquered. That's what we're doing here, folks. Skills in understanding definitions. We're not simply looking at a definition and memorizing it. I want you to be able to take apart a word. And I want you to be able to understand a word. What part of speech is invincible again? Part of speech. Adjective, thank you very much. Just to give you a hint, the words in the workbook usually belong to one of four parts of speech. Noun, verb, adjective, adverb. None of them are conjunctions or anything else. Give me more. More words. Yes. Victory, excellent. Part of speech. You can victory something? Aha. Somebody's over here behind me commenting, gosh, I don't remember parts of speech. Folks, do you see my parts of speech signs? that are basically falling down because I ran out of tape and must buy some more. Do you see them, how they're cute? They've got like, you know, cute little pictures and little bubbles with the sample words. They're kind of elementary school, you know? They came from an elementary school supply section in the teacher supply store. You know why I can't find any high school posters? Because you're supposed to have learned it by now. And if you're sitting there saying, I don't know what a noun is, I don't know what an adjective is, you should be embarrassed to say that as a user of the English language. So some of you are laughing, oh, OK. So what you do is you remind yourself of what a noun is, and then you think, victory. Is it an action that I do? Does it modify a noun? Does it modify a verb? Or is it a thing? Now Mandy's all put on the spot and going to be embarrassed if she answers it wrong. It's not a verb, Mandy. It is a noun. What? It's a thing. Victory's a thing, right? A thing that you can have. You can have a victory. Yeah. Now it's an abstract thing, but it's still a thing. Because you don't victory something. I don't say, I victory the game. I would say, I win the game, correct? Okay. Now, victory. Can somebody take the word victory as a noun and make it an adjective for me? Victorious. victorious. Can you make that an adverb? Come on, Shada. You know you can. Victory, victorious, and? Victor? Oh, victor's another noun. Victorious. It's a different kind of noun. What? Victoriously. Thank you, James. Victoriously. 
Um, pause for a moment and reflect on what we're doing. Pause and reflect on what we're doing. What am I pushing you to? An understanding of the grammar of the words. I do not emphasize in this class you memorizing lists of words. Is that part of it? Yes. But is that the end of it? No. That's just the beginning. You must be able to take words apart. You must be able to recognize their part of speech, or else you will never understand them. Cassie, did you have another one? Uh, no. Who else has another word using the vink or vict? Now you're all scared. You don't need to. Victim! Excellent! Olivia, what is a victim? What does it mean? Take, take a look at the definition here and tell me what the word victim means. Somebody who's been conquered, somebody who's been defeated, right? Here's some others. Well, victorious we already went through. But evict. Uh-huh. To be kicked out. Thank you very much. The word e is a prefix meaning out. Vict means to conquer, to conquer out, to push out, to kick out. All right. Chris, yes? High five. Chris, what part of speech is it? Jared. Sorry, Chris. Jared, what part of speech is it? Yes. It is a verb. Can you make it a noun? <laughs> you can, but Christian, help him out. Eviction. Thank you very much. Number two. The recording does that. This is Darla. And Darla is a duck. Ducks like to lead their ducklings around. Ducks are leaders. Tom, Tom, help me out here. What do you think the root is? Um. Say it louder. Duck. Close. Keep going. Duck. Yeah, nice, Tom. Duck or ducked. Duck or ducked. And it could be um, the soft C sound also. Courtney, what does it mean? Then reread the, the caption. Very good. See? Folks, this isn't tough. It means to lead. All right. Yusra, you've got a word. I'm sorry? Sure you do. Duct. Think about it. Put prefix on it. Prefixes are induct. Excellent. Yusra, what does induct mean? <laughs> oh, you just put a prefix on it. Uh, induct is to bring inside. So you are inducted into an organization. Like during a ceremony, quite often they induct somebody into an organization by bringing them in, leading them into the organization. Kerrigan. Conduct. conduct. Excellent. What does conduct mean? Aha. Conduct is your behavior. If I change the pronunciation and I say conduct, what is conduct? What part of speech? Part of speech. Conduct. Oh. Uh, oh uh, uh, verb. Thank you very much. And what does it mean when I conduct something? Together. The prefix con means together. A train conductor leads together a bunch of different train cars. Symphony conductor leads together a bunch of different parts of the symphony. There's conduct. Aqueduct, viaduct. I'm sorry? No, that uh, actually comes from the DIC root, which means to speak. Duct tape. Yes, but hold on. Stop. Because I'm always shocked every year how many students don't know what duct tape, first of all, don't know how to spell duct tape. Secondly, they don't really understand what duct tape is. You've got this stuff running through our ceiling. It's called duct work. It's that metal rectangular channel. Channel means it leads airflow. It leads air, just as an aqueduct leads water. So we have duct.